So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the seven most used bass sounds in electronic music, and we're gonna look at how you can make them in synths like Serum and Vital. So let's cut the intro short and just dive right into it. First up, the sub bass. So sub bass has one goal, to fill out the sub frequency in your mix, and that's anything below 60 hertz, which we can see here. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure you've carved out any of the sub frequencies from the other basses and other low end instruments in your mix. So to do that, you can use an EQ, or if you're using a synth like Serum, you can go into the wavetable editor and you can actually go process, remove fundamental. So once you have that ready to go, you can layer in your sub bass. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at how to actually make a sub bass. So sub basses are cool because you can literally put them in every track, in every subgenre of electronic music, and you probably should. It'll help fill out your mix. And to do it, it's quite simple. You just need to load up either a sine wave or variation of a sine wave, or maybe even a triangle waveform, and then just tune it down an octave or two, depending on your key. So sine wave is gonna be very clean, very pure, pure sounding, and it's gonna be a little bit hard to hear on small speakers. So if you're running into that problem, Maybe opt for a triangle waveform because there's more buzz to it. Check it out. Here's triangle. Versus sine. Now you can filter out some of the frequencies that are introduced via the triangle waveform with a low pass filter. And there's still gonna be more buzz and grit to it than just a pure sine wave. Now here's a cool tip and trick you can, you can do when you're using a wavetable synth. Load up a sine wave, and then load up the bend plus warp mode. You have this warp mode in both Serum and Vital. And then what you're gonna do is just bend the wave a little bit, and this will pinch the wave towards the center of the waveform, and it will add some buzz, which will help make the sub bass more present on smaller speakers. Next, we have the Reese bass. The Reese bass began life in the 90s in a jungle house track, and ever since then, it's been a mainstay in electronic music. So making a Reese bass isn't actually that hard. Making a unique Reese bass that still fits the kind of sound and character of a Reese bass is more difficult. So the general process is to tune your oscillator down an octave or two. So we're in vitals, so we're gonna do negative 24 semitones. We'll add nine voices of unison. You can add seven, five, eight even. I like using an odd number because there's going to be a voice right in the center of the stereo field. And then turn on a filter. And that is the basis of all Reese basses. So we just looked at a basic example of a Reese bass. Let's look at some more nuanced, subgenre specific ones. So Reese basses are so popular because they just work in so many subgenres of electronic music, and they really excel in two areas of production. You can use them in low energy sections of your track without them becoming overbearing. Now, the second main reason why they're so popular is because they allow you to move freely within your arrangement. You can start a track like this and then have the Reese bass come in on the B section of the intro or verse. You can also use respaces to kind of blend together fusions of genres, right? Here's an example of going from like a kind of a typical EDM pop style intro into more of a pop punk style verse. The third bass we're gonna look at is the Dirty Saw bass or the Dirty Square bass. So these are similar to the Reese bass in that they're usually a kind of sustained bass, right? The envelope's not short and plucky, but these, these excel in high energy sections of your track, or if your track is just high energy, this is a good choice.
First thing you're gonna do, load up a saw wave table or waveform or maybe a square. Then you're gonna introduce some noise, have that go to the direct out of your synth. Hop on over to your effects, add some stereo widening, some EQ, go to the distor distortion and crank that, add a compressor, and you should get something like this. The fourth bass we're gonna be looking at is more of a category of basses, and it's called the house bass. So this is a bass that you'll use in house music. Well, house music has about 6,432,000 subgenres, and each subgenre of house usually has a bass that is stylistically ubiquitous to that subgenre. So I don't wanna take up two hours of your guys' life playing all these different uh, subgenres and the basses that go along with them, but let's run through a few of the really popular iconic ones right now. Now the crazy thing is, all of those basses have a common motif or theme running through them. It's the envelope shape for either the main envelope or the filter envelope. So all of them make use of a short plucky envelope, which we can see here. The fifth bass we're gonna be checking out in this video is what I'm dubbing the FM from bass. Now this bass was really popularized by Massive, the original Massive, and then Serum took it to a whole another level, and Vital has this feature as well. Basically, it's a way to simplify FM synthesis. Instead of having a bunch of carriers and operators and having to build a sound from scratch, you can take an oscillator and apply frequency modulation using that waveform to another oscillator. So it works well with like a clean sounding waveform in the primary oscillator. And then you apply the FM from, in this instance, FM from B to that clean sound. So here's a great example. This preset, when I have FM from B up, is an awesome sounding bass house priest that I made for an upcoming pack. When this is down, I don't know what it sounds like. It sounds like a really, really crappy sub. Check it out. Now I turn up FM from B. This FM from B is a great way to get kind of the classic wub sound or growl sound. All right, so now we're gonna check out analog flavored basses. Now, analog basses can be found in pretty much every genre of our subgenre of electronic music. And you can turn a lot of the basses we've already looked at into analog flavored versions of them. Check this out. Here where we have kind of a uh, slap house style bass, and it sounds like this. Now, just by changing the waveform to something else that's more analog inspired, here's one of ours called ESW Moog 37. Right now it sounds like an analog flavored bass. Here's a square version of it. And the last bass we're gonna be checking out is the 808. So we're all probably pretty familiar with this sound. It's super iconic. It is overused and abused in trap and pop and even genres of electronic music like hyper pop, hybrid trap, dubstep, uh, future bass, you name it, it's probably been there. Now the 808 is pretty easy to make in a synth like Serum or Vital. It can be hard to get a really good sounding 808, but to get a basic one, it's not too difficult. So I'm gonna show you how you can do that or some techniques you can use to get good sounding 808s in a synth. Because let me tell you, once you get good at it or you find some presets that you like tweaking, you get better results than dragging in samples because you don't have to pitch them up and down and you don't have uneven lengths, like one note plays and sustains for way longer than the other note because you're stretching it. All right, so here's what, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna listen to this bass without anything that's basically turning it into an 808. So it's gonna sound like a really bad bass. Let me turn it up for a second. 
All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some distortion, turn on a low pass filter, modulate that low pass filter with an envelope shape that looks like this, kind of short and plucky. Now we have this. Still just sounds like a bass. So an 808 is really a quite specific sound in terms of what you need to make it sound like an 808. You need the subtone, which we have here. And this could be a clean sine wave or a dirty sine wave like we have in this example. And then you're gonna need a pitch fall. And you can use an envelope and modulate a coarse pitch of an oscillator to, to get that pitch fall. And I'm gonna use a macro to control it. Check it out. So that's too much, but a little bit gives it that 808 sound. Let's turn our sustain up and our release a little bit. So now we need to get the other part of the 808 in, the kick or the transient. We could use a noise oscillator or a sample oscillator, but I'm gonna use that for an actual kind of ambient texture just to do that because I think it'll dirty up the sound. So I'm gonna opt for using a LFO to get the kick or the transient. So we're just gonna modulate the coarse pitch of our oscillator here. And I've already done that, so we're just gonna turn off bypass. If I crank this up, you're gonna hear a tick or a kick sound. So basically you just have to set the rate to sound like a transient and not a beep. And then set the height with the LFO or the depth of your modulation to get the sound you want. All right, so that's gonna sum up this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can post those below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. If you guys aren't subscribed to our channel, you know the drill. Hit that subscribe button. The support really does mean a lot to us. And if you guys haven't ever checked out our website, echosoundworks.com, definitely head on over there. There's a ton of free content, samples, loops, and presets. And of course, there's some premium sound sets and sample packs as well. And lastly, if you guys use Instagram, consider giving us a follow. We run a lot of contests, giveaways, and promotions on that platform. And I think you guys will like what we're doing over there. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.